everybody and welcome back to another massive Wheel of Time TV show news video. In today's video we have a ton to get to. I will have all of the recaps and information from JordanCon, including some interesting tidbits about the TV show from Rafe and Brandon Sanderson. Then we'll have some information on the production and updated budget, a new Season 2 director, and some information on Season 2 filming. And yeah, we're going to talk about what to expect from the Comic-Con panel later this week with Rafe Judkins. So let's go ahead and jump right on into it. But first, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter, at BlissNay, so you can see when I have information about the show that I tweet about or when I release other content, all kinds of stuff like that. Let's get some new Twitter followers, peeps. Also, let's hit the spoiler warning. Today's video is going to carry a spoiler rating of red, but with spoilers only through The Great Hunt, the second book of the series. If you have not read all the way up to The Great Hunt, you may want to turn this video off to prevent being spoiled on anything, but honestly, most of it's going to be pretty light. All right, so we got a lot of news to get to. Let's jump right in. Let me start with Jordan Khan. This past weekend, JordanCon 2021 happened in Atlanta. Now, I was there along with about 500 other people, and it was an absolute blast. JordanCon is an annual convention to celebrate Robert Jordan, and last year's event was canceled due to COVID. This year's event was limited because of COVID. However, I did make my first trip this year, and I had an absolutely amazing time. Now, I know many of you were following on social media. You saw all the posts. I know there was like a FOMO con going on, for those of you who don't know fear of missing out. I know that was real. I have some pictures from the event running across the screen right now. There were all kinds of panels on the Wheel of Time, some that I was on. Uh, there was a ton of time to sit around and geek out with other Wheel of Time fans. There were tons and tons of other creators in attendance too. And I can say that probably my favorite time from the weekend was just hanging out with people that I'd met on the Discord server or at the event and just talking about the TV show and the books that we all love. The Dusty Wheel shot two live episodes, both of which I make an appearance on, and Brandon Sanderson like literally like crashed it, tapped on my shoulder, and was like, oh, hey, there you are. Uh, we recorded an episode of Tarval and After Dark live with an audience there, so that was a lot of fun. Check that episode out, by the way. It's definitely a different one with a live crowd there, but it was a ton of fun. Now, before getting to the news from the weekend, I should say to all of you that want to go next year, I know there's a lot of you, Make sure to get your reservations and ticket as soon as that is released. It's obviously not yet, but it will be. The venue can only hold a little bit more than 1,200 people, and I would expect that I would expect the entire convention to sell out very, very quickly. Follow JordanCon on Twitter and bookmark their website and just kind of keep updating that if you want to make sure that you get there. It is worth it. But anyways, Brandon Sanderson was in attendance at the convention, and he mentioned some Wheel of Time TV show things even if it was not intentional. Rafe Judkins also sent a recorded message to the event, and we'll break down both of those things right now. First, let's hit on Rafe's message. I'll go ahead and play the message so you guys can see what he said live, and it was played live at the convention. Go ahead. Hey guys, I know you're all at Jordan Con. I wish I could be there too, but I'm here in Prague, uh, just getting started on season two of The Wheel of Time. I know this is a panel about all the stuff that we've released before. It's amazing to see all your guys' theories on everything that comes out, and uh, we have a lot more coming out soon. There should be a trailer dropping by the end of the summer, and uh, hopefully next year I can be at Jordan Con with you. All right, have fun, guys. Bye. So as you can see, Rafe did not say a whole lot, but he did promise us a trailer by the end of the summer, which leaves a very open-ended timeline to make that happen. That could mean that we get a trailer soon, uh, or it could be as far away as like September 21st, which is the last day of summer, all depending on how much they want to mess with us. We will come back to this topic in a minute here, though. Brandon Sanderson was on a panel at the convention, and he was answering some questions, and he asked the crowd if they knew the release schedule for the show yet, and when they all answered no... He caught himself and he said he was glad because he was about to share it. So everybody that was watching that, that is your fault that Brandon did not tell us the release schedule for the show. Uh, but that does mean that they know the release schedule for the show and that Brandon is clued into that information as well. He obviously did stop short of telling us that, but if I had to guess, I would say that we are probably going to get some combination of uh, a binge release where they release a couple episodes and then a weekly release. I would guess between two and three drop immediately and then they'll go weekly from there. But that is just a guess. This is something that Amazon has done now with the boys to pretty good success. And the success of the Marvel shows on Disney Plus being released weekly, that's going to give the show the opportunity uh, to become like weekly water cooler talk around the world, which is, I think, what's going to add to the buzz 
That's sort of what happened with Game of Thrones, and I'm hoping that happens here. Selfishly, if they do that, it is also going to help me make content for each episode, something that I am extremely excited to do. Now, let's move on to some more production news. First up, our good friends at Wattseries.com have reported on something that I think is pretty significant. They are reporting that the production team from the show has signed a lease on an extremely large warehouse and production facility on the outskirts of Prague and have named it Jordan Studios. According to Watt Series, the building contains multiple sound stages, a costume studio, elf buildings, administrative offices for the production team. The building itself is incredibly massive. It's 344,000 square feet, approximately. And let me put that in perspective uh, to a lot of you. This is around two and a half times the size of a Costco. So put two Costcos next to each other, and then half of another one, and that is the size of this building. That is freaking large. Now, this is majorly significant for a number of reasons. First of all, they chose to lease their own building rather than using one of the existing major studios in Prague, of which there are many. The Amazon show Carnival Row, as Watt Series points out, used one of those other studios. They didn't get their own. Wheel of Time gets their own massive two and a half Costco building. So Wheel of Time is getting its own studio, which is pretty crazy. And the next natural step in thought here is that they know this is going to be a long process with many seasons. And so they're taking a large building. I, I'm beginning to think that they uh, were given a number of seasons up front. There seemed to be no question, basically, that season two was going to happen. And honestly, I'm getting the feeling like season three is an obvious thing, too. The other thing of note here is that the building is so large and a lot of the filming is being done outdoors. So why in the heck do they need such a large building? My guess would be that they are that there are going to be a great number of interior sets that they're going to reuse and they want to house those in that studio over time, hence the massive building. So for instance, if they've got a throne room in Camelin, right? Like they wanna build that set and they wanna leave it built. They'll leave it in this building and then they'll shoot whenever they have scenes in Camelin there. Does that make sense? So lots and lots of those will be in that building and that's why they need a gigantic one. Now, before getting to other news, let me quickly thank the video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an enormous community of online courses that can literally teach you to do just about anything. What's really awesome is that it's also incredibly cheap and you can constantly be improving yourself or your knowledge base, learn a new skill. I am a huge proponent of personal development. It's mostly what I do for a living. And Skillshare gives you the ability to learn for super cheap. My friend is taking a basic photography course on Skillshare and is making some really, really good pictures and photos and all that. You can learn to paint, you can learn to write, you can learn to make YouTube videos, and you can learn to cook, all of that. It's all for like a super low monthly fee. You get a ton of value out of it. I get amazing use out of Skillshare, and so can you. So just head to the link in the description of this video, sign up for the free trial. You'll get a month to check it out for free. You'll be able to see if it's something that you want to keep, and you support the channel by doing so. Thank you so much to Skillshare. Thank you to all of you that use it, and let's get back to the video. So the next piece of news, which seems to tie into this last piece about the big, huge studio, is that we have an updated budget for the show as well. Now, this comes courtesy also of WattSeries.com. You catching the theme here? They have done some sleuthing, and based on some public figures released by the Czech State Fund of Cinematography, the, the Wheel of Time TV show has spent $91 million on their first season in the Czech Republic alone. Now, that is not including money that is spent in Croatia, Slovenia, Spain, Tenerife. This is not including money spent on visual effects, and it's not for the cast and crew. So let me break this down so it makes more sense. Game of Thrones one of the most expensive productions of all time. Spent six million per episode in its first season for a total of $60 million. Wheel of Time, in an eight episode season, is spending at minimum 12 million per episode, not counting the crew, filming locations outside of the Czech Republic, visual effects, and the cast that we know of. And that's just what we know of. So it's more than double the first season, minus all the other stuff so it's more than likely season one of the wheel of time is going to be getting a budget around 15 million per episode more than doubling like i said what game of thrones spent on its first season and matching what they spent on their final season in just season one of the wheel of time that's a lot of money so i repeat this for those of you in the back i know i'm going to get this comment anyway it comes every time we talk about the show I get at least three of these comments. This is not going to be Shannara Chronicles. I don't know how people watch a video talking about a budget like this and then go, 
Yep, it feels cheap like Shannara Chronicles. They are spending more on one episode of The Wheel of Time than they spent on the entire season of the first season of Shannara Chronicles. So, if Wheel of Time ends up being bad, it very well still could, it will not be because of budget or special effects or hiring people. It will be because of bad writing. We don't know that yet. I don't think it's going to be bad writing, but if it is bad, that's probably the reason. It won't be because they didn't spend money to bring the world to life, to build it out, all of that. And it's not because they didn't hire the right people. They've got top special effects people, top costume designers, top directors, all of that. So they are really throwing out the money to make this happen. Amazon does not make low production value shows. That is something that is in their MO. There's not a single low production value show that they make. Everything they do is cinematic. Where stuff is not good is typically if it's written poorly. But most of their stuff is really, really good. So again, if you are thinking about commenting that this is just like the Shannara Chronicles, that's just kind of an uneducated opinion. You cannot like the writing, you cannot like maybe some of the direction, but don't say that. So let's move on to some season two stuff. First, Amazon released an image indicating that they had started filming season two of The Wheel of Time. Now, this is certainly exciting, and if they're starting season two filming now, let's say they hypothetically finish the season by September or October, that looks like we are setting up for a 2022 release for season two. So we may not have to wait super long for the second season. The other thing of note here is that the information in the picture releasing that information tells us some new stuff. The director listed for this episode is Thomas Knapper, which is something that we did not know before. So they basically just announced the director. Thomas Knapper is a British director known for his work on Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, Mary Poppins Returns, Jawbone, and The Darkest Hour. So he's been a director and like a first director, so he does some other stuff, but very involved in those productions. Also listed in this picture is David Moxness. He's the director of photography. He's returning from work on season one. He's done a bunch of other stuff. I mentioned him in an earlier video. Lastly, in season two news, Wattseries.com again is reporting that the production was looking for a couple stand-ins that very much match descriptions of Gawain and Elaine for the series. Now, while this is certainly not confirmed in any way, it does seem to follow considering that it's looking like they are not going to be in season one. Um, none of the trans will. So it looks like they'll probably be in season two, and that's kind of where they're looking to introduce them early on, which is kind of something I predicted. I just don't think it makes sense to put the Tracans in season one for a glorified cameo. You either needed to expand their role a lot or just bump them to the next season, which is what it sounds like they're doing. So now let's pivot and talk a little bit about Comic-Con. I know I already talked about this in my previous news video, so I will be brief on this regard. Dragon Mount came out with an article basically saying that they did not believe we would be getting a trailer at Comic-Con. I made a video saying I think we will. I don't know that any of us are totally in the know on that, so it could be possible that we still see that. I would be put my betting money on number one, that we are going to get a release date and that we will see some footage. That footage may take the form of a teaser, it will probably not be a full trailer, but I do think they will string something together to kind of get people hype as they give a release date. And then he'll do some Q&A, he'll answer some questions, show some assets. That's what I believe will happen. I'm going to be on the dusty wheel talking about that. So as it's live tomorrow, you can catch me on the dusty wheel talking about the Wheel of Time with Daniel Green. It'll be a great time. Make sure to tune into that. But I thought I would give you a quick update. I do not totally believe the Dragon Mount article. Comic Con is typically a place where assets will be released, and it actually says that there will be assets released. So it remains to be seen. I'm hoping that we do. Anyways, what do you guys think of the news? Make sure to let me know in the comments of the video. Also, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release new content. I will have a couple interesting videos coming up here soon. Special thank you to my supporters on Patreon. You guys keep the lights on. If you'd like to support the channel and thegreatblight.com, please consider becoming a supporter on Patreon as well. You can find that link in the description of this video. Again, also make sure to check out Skillshare. Thank you for watching everybody and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?